Good morning, dear saints, and all of you others. I. What? Me? Worry? Stressing much, huh? You know, when it comes to this topic of stress, of worry, you know the word worry is not found in the authorized version of scripture, but what is defined as worry is clearly addressed within both the Old and the New Testament. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we know from personal experience and also with the um, communication that we have with other brethren and sisters, a lot of people, so many dear saints are struggling right now. So many saints, reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 7, just one verse, verse 5, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 5, for when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. And of course, you go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 8. On to verse 10. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure beyond above strength, and so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. Why? That we should not trust in ourselves, but God which raiseth the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Verse 11. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, praying for one another, weeping with those who weep, and rejoicing with those who rejoice, being of one mind, being knit together. Okay? Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Hmm. You know, our flesh causes us to worry. Our flesh causes us to stress. I asked a brother, uh, my best friend, uh, dear brother Alexander Hartley, I never really had given it much thought, give me another, give me a scriptural word for uh, worry, stressing, without, without batting an eyelash, fret, to fret, to fret, fretting, fret, fretting, fretted, fretteth. We're going to talk about that today. But first, I want to address this about worry. Number one, the word worry is not in the authorized version of the scriptures. It is not. Okay? And neither is stress, I do believe. One, one moment, let me double check. Beg your pardon, I just had to check. Yes, yeah, stress is not in the uh, authorized version as well. But what is defined as today is definitely addressed. Okay, And when you look at the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, our Apostle, the Apostle unto the Gentiles, you got to remember, Paul had a pride problem. Paul struggled with his flesh. Paul was not sinlessly perfect. These devils out there who talk about sinless perfection today, uh, Paul must have missed that memo. Okay? He must have. And with everything that Paul had to go through, was going through, did. You're going to try to tell me that Paul never stressed, never was anxious, never fretted anything? 
But what say the scripture? We're going to be looking at the word fret and its variations. But I want us to touch on this. Because the devil will use flesh to take our eyes upon, off of the Lord and make us concentrate, or will have us, excuse me, to concentrate on the things around us while not looking upward. In Matthew chapter 6, good instruction and righteousness. Matthew chapter 26, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along in the scriptures that we will look at today. Read along with me. Follow me along. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. If you come to a, a part in scripture where, they're, where you're confused or uh, don't know the context or, or something like that, pause the video and check the context on your own time, okay? Be a Berean. Read along with me. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, okay? Read along with me because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Okay? Don't just sit there. Get the scriptures. Don't just shoot off at your mouth. <laughs> Mr. White. John boy. Get the scriptures. Okay? Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 on to verse 34. Now you got to remember about Matthew chapter 6, about the Sermon on the Mount. Doctrinally, it is not written for us today. Doctrinally, there is a whole lot of instruction in righteousness, but doctrinally, the Sermon on the Mount does not apply for us today. Okay? Faith is mentioned one time in the form of a rebuke. Okay? There's no death, burial, and resurrection ever mentioned or implied within the Sermon on the Mount. It's all works. Why? Because the Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. To instruct us in righteousness for today? Absolutely. Doctrine? No. No. Okay? We've, we've discussed this. There's a difference between doctrine and instruction and righteousness, okay? But, knowing that, this is spoken of in context with the King, our Lord Jesus Christ, literally sitting on the throne at Jerusalem, okay? So, Matthew chapter, 20, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 on to verse 34. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon, most of us understand that to be the do-re-mi. Okay? Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Now, most of us, even us saints, we come to this, he's like, he's talking about worrying. Think about it. Think about it. Take a little thought. Every pun intended, okay? What happens when you're in a bind? Hmm? And you start stressing. You start worrying. Fretting. Uh, you are witness. Uh, I need to remove, personally, I need to remove the word worry from my vocabulary. Well, what are you going to say, Brad? Fret. We'll get to that in a bit. But, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Stressing. Worrying. Okay? When you have a great need. Okay? When you think you're on that um, sub, that sinking submarine. Or you're standing on, on something and you see something about to fall on you. Whatever it may be. Which of you by taking thought? And what happens when you're stressing? When you're worrying, as it were? Okay, what happens? The mind starts racing, doesn't it? 
you start thinking outside the box so to say but sometimes too also even saints and Paul just touched on it a little bit even saints can start looking outside rather than keeping their eyes focused and you got to remember hold your place here go to Romans chapter 7 people spend time in Romans chapter 7 understand what Paul is talking about there okay these these wicked devils who say that you, you gotta stop sinning. You, you know, if you were truly saved, you wouldn't sin anymore. Paul missed that. Okay? Somehow Paul didn't get that point. Okay? In Romans chapter 7, verse 15. For that which I do I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Okay? Paul sinned. Paul sinned daily. Okay? Paul had a pride problem. And also with what Paul went through in his life as an apostle, <laughs> you talk about some legitimate reasons to stress or to fret. Hmm? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? But see, us stressing or us fretting of things, if it would make us Ten foot tall, it would be worth something, wouldn't it? Now, this does not mean that you become flippant, care less about it. No, you do not fo No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 27 again. Which of you, by taking thought, could can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now right here. The beauty, the clothing, the way Solomon looked, I'm sure was beautiful to the eyes. The thing that man could make. But when you look at the artwork, the beauty of what our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, can make. The clouds, the sunsets, the beauty of the birds, the colors, the flowers in the field. They, what man can produce falls short in comparison to the beauty that the Lord allows us to behold with our eyes. Okay? Wherefore, verse 30, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? What's the faith in there? A faith mentioned there, huh? Number one, it's a rebuke. But number two, it's in what? In form of what? The death, burial, and resurrection? No. In the miraculous provision of the king who can, will, and does provide miraculously. We're going to look at that. Okay? Verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? And I've heard people who try to take the Sermon of, on the Mount and make it doctrine for today. You run into these people, brethren, saints, all of you, you run into these people who try to take the Sermon on the Mount and make it doctrine for today. Get away from them. Okay? All right? Instruction and in righteousness. We're going to look at this in Philippians chapter 4. God will provide your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. You ain't, you ain't saved, you ain't a saint. That doesn't apply to you. Who's answering your prayers? Hmm, you're not a saint? The devil is the one who's giving you. All right? But, verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? See, again, this is in context to the king being on the throne at Jerusalem. Okay? Alright? This does not mean for instruction in righteousness today that you be flippant or care less about it. No. 
Not at all. But your trust needs to be on the Lord. Okay? Be either on God or man. Which one is it? You can't have both ways. See? And a lot of Christianity tells you that you can have your cake and eat it too. Uh, but no, that's not the way it works. Let's continue. For all, after all these things do the Gentiles seek, keeping in mind that our Lord Jesus Christ was sent unto who? At first, who? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? He was sent first to the Jew. All right? It wasn't after the death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross and the rejection of the gospel, the kingdom of God, by the Jew, the Hebraic people, that we Gentiles were grafted in to the tree of the Jew. Okay? So, this, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Gentiles. At this time, Gentiles were not factored in to this equation. See how that works, okay? All right? He was offering the Jewish people, the Hebraic people, the kingdom of heaven, the physical, literal kingdom. With him, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, sitting on the throne as the Son of David, King of the Jews. Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, that kind of thing, okay? Now, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Now that, right there, verse 32, absolutely. Our Father, God knows what you need. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, he is not oblivious. But he wants that communion with you. That uh, a relationship with you. To speak. To have a dialogue with with the Lord, okay? That's what he wants. He wants a relation with you, okay? All right? He knows what you need. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, this is very significant in this context. Because why? You only hear of the kingdom of heaven... Kingdom of heaven within the book of Matthew. And every single time that you see kingdom of heaven, every single time, it is always a reference unto what? The physical, literal kingdom that will be in Jerusalem. That is Jerusalem. Okay? So this is significant when you see him say here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, spiritual. See, the distingu distinguishing between the two. Okay? Yes, according to context, there are appearances, times when the kingdom of God can be a reference onto the kingdom of heaven. More often than not, it is a reference onto the spiritual, not the physical kingdom. Okay? So, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek the Lord first. Whether he slay you or not, trust in him. And see, if you're not a saint, if you're not of the church of God, the one who you look to is Satan. Well, I don't believe in any God. I'm an atheist. Yes, you do. You lie and your breasts stink. You do believe in a God yourself. Hence, you are of your father, the devil. Because you say in your own heart that there is no God and also that you are as God, knowing good and evil. Okay? Don't, don't. Brethren, saints, when you run into these atheists who say, I don't believe in God, rebuke them sharply. Just be like, oh, shut up. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And they're going to spit fire back at you. But, I mean, at the times that we are living in, brethren, saints, get a little gruff with these atheists. Okay? Get a little gruff with them. Okay? I don't believe in any God. It's not, shut up. Yes, you do. The one you look at in the mirror, man. Now, granted, that will, like I said, that will cause them to spit fire back at you. But it gets their attention. Okay? Some, save with, uh, some have compassion, making a difference. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Okay? Verse 34. Therefore, 
No, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And then when you go to Proverbs uh, 27, right? Which is also echoed in James, okay? Proverbs 27, verse 1, just one verse. Verse 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Okay? And Paul talks about having food and raiment. Let us be there with content. Okay? God knows what we need. Okay? God knows what we need. Now, see, go to Luke chapter 22 now. Luke chapter 22, because there are those poor people out there who refuse to rightly divide the word of truth, and they'll say, well, why, why isn't that doctrine for us today? The fact that the Lord knows what we need and he wants us to seek him and trust him rather than the things of the world, yes, that does cross a dispensational line. Obvious! Okay, but, okay, but Luke chapter 22, verses 35 on to verse 38. Okay? And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip, and shoes lacked ye anything and they said nothing they didn't lack anything hmm. Hmm. then said he unto them but now but now he that hath a purse let him take it and likewise his scrip and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. What's happening here? You look at verse 35. When I sent you without purse and script and shoes lacked ye anything? Hold your place here. Go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Okay? Mark chapter 8. What we are looking at is showing you that in Matthew 6, 24 under 34, while instruction and in righteousness for us today, doctrinally, it is in the context of the king being on the earth, miraculously providing for his people. Okay? Mark chapter 8, verses uh, 14 on verse 21. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And, Jesus, and when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, I, the oy vey, you know, <laughs> why reason ye? Why reason ye? Because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes see ye not, and having ears hear ye not, and do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They sent unto him twelve. And when the seven and when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? What is he talking about? Look at that. For, look at the verse. Don't look at me. Okay? They were fretting because they didn't take any bread. And the Lord's, you know, and in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, okay, the same thing is basically said, okay? Uh, we will start at uh, verse 6, okay? 6 on to verse 12. 
I know in the notes I sent you guys it was 1 on to verse 12. You can go ahead and read verses 1 on to verse 12 if you want. Okay? <laughs> then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, took thought, saying, It is because we have no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, there it is again, as in Matthew chapter 6, what was the faith therein? Their king, as king, to provide for them miraculously. Okay? Okay? You with me? O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Okay? See, the whole point here, go back to Mark chapter 8, okay? Go back to Mark chapter 8. Look at verse 21 again. And he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? And then back in Luke chapter 22, he says in verse 35, And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Here's what he's talking about, okay? The thing that we looked at in Matthew chapter 6, the Sermon on the Mount, was in context to the king being on the earth who can, will, and does provide miraculously for his people. Okay? All right? You have to understand that. Our instruction in righteousness is, we do as the Lord commands us for today, doctrinally in this dispensation, while re reading the Old Testament, of course, because all things that were written for time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope, okay? But our instruction in righteousness is to remember what? That God will provide for his own according to our need, not our greed. Okay? The Lord knows what we need. Okay, Today in this dispensation, you come to the Lord on his terms. He saves you. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. Once saved, always saved. Sealed unto the day of redemption. He lives within you. Okay, He is not oblivious to what you need. But he wants a relationship with you. God is a jealous God. Okay? And when you take your eyes off of the Lord and focus on this stuff, the relationship between the two of you can wax faint. Okay? Why? Because you get too caught up in these things. Because that's what the devil wants you to do as well. To, you know, we're not to be oblivious. But see, the devil will have you fixated on all these things. Because he, you know, all this will I give to you. If you fall down and worship me, all will be mine. Why? Because all has been given on to Satan for judgment against this world to give to whom he wants, right? So naturally, Satan, who is all about flesh, Okay, Matthew chapter 16 again, where he's like, uh, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. Okay, see, if Satan can get us saints fixated on the things of this life more so than with him. Okay? Comprende? But, now see also what happened. The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? New dispensation came in. The dispensation that we are currently in, which uh, salvation is by grace through faith. The kingdom of heaven is all works. When Jesus Christ was alive, walking on the earth as the Lamb, okay? All right? The law was still binding. Okay? With no eternal security under the law. All right? You understand? So you read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 100, verse 7. Read that on your own time, okay? 
All right, but in Philippians chapter four, now we're going to read pieces of Philippians chapter four, and you and these Christians today have made have tried to make trivial these truths because they turn it to make you the object of all things when it is the Lord that is to be who we pay all our homage and all our attention on to. Okay? Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 on to verse 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Whether he slay me or not, <laughs> yet will I trust in him. Okay? That's in Job. Hold your place there. Job chapter 13. Job chapter 13. Just one verse. Verse 15. Okay? And we talked about this uh, recently as well. Okay? Job 13 verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. He knows what's best. God is a jealous God. Okay? But I will maintain mine own ways before him. Okay? Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 and verse 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Note it says careful, not careless. Okay? But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And of course, in Proverbs chapter 3, okay, hold your place here, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, or prover Proverbs, whatever you want to, okay. Proverbs chapter 3. Tr uh, 5 and 6, uh, 5 and 7, 5 on verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, in all thine ways, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Okay? Verse 7 in Proverbs 3. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Verse 7 in uh, Philippians 4. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Because why? This is not it. Again, the eternal mindset. Which we saints can sometimes lose sight of. Paul even did. Even though Paul was extraordinarily eternally minded. But yet, by the things he went through, of course he fretted. Of course he was under duress. Under great strain. Of course he was. Of course he was. Okay. Skipping a little, 11 on to verse 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Eternal mindset. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Meaning, okay, things are going on right now. Okay, I don't know if we're going to make it, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look to you, I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to keep uh, searching the scriptures daily, and I'm also going to be walking according to the scriptures until you, Lord, reveal to me, show me, or do for me, I'm going to keep going as you would have me to go. Okay? All right? I know both how to be a base. Hi. I know and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am, in, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. 
I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Christ the strength. Christ our power. Christ our hope. Christ our all. Christ our Father. He is the answer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And see, we saints have moments where we are hypocrites. Paul had moments when he was a hypocrite. Okay? Acts chapter 21. Okay? Moments of extreme fretting. <laughs> okay? Of extreme duress. Okay? Now, skipping also, just one verse, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Okay? And about the raiment, remember what our Lord said? Though Solomon had, I betcha, as king, who could get anything his little heart desired. He even says that in Ecclesiastes, okay? But he withheld not his heart from any desire. Anything he wanted, he got. But yet our Lord says, the birds, the flowers, sunsets, the beauty of what our Lord does, okay? What man can do as far as beauty doesn't even come close. Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one. Verses three on to verse seven. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. That's us. We, we pray for the brethren. We pray for our brethren night and day. Do you pray for the brethren night and day? Great, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And when you start fretting, okay, when you start fretting, when stress gets to you when you allow it to be such not being oblivious or flippant but having it in its proper proportion but also realizing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord recently we went through a lot of this and we asked for prayer and many of you did pray pray and have prayed and are praying you know, how, how can the poor help fellow poor saints overseas? Pray for them. How can you help a brother who you cannot see yet or don't have the means to go there yet? Pray for them. Pray for them. Okay? And of course, Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 28 on to verse 31. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his promise, uh, who are the called according to his promise. Calvinists come to that and say, elect and not. No. God is a God who chooses. Okay? All right. Excuse me. Writing that down for a, a link in the description box. God 
chooses the way of salvation for the dispensation. Okay? God chose the way of the cross. He elected, you could say, the way of the cross. And when you go the way of the cross, the way that our Lord Jesus Christ prescribed for us, then are you the called. Then you are the elect because you go the elect way that he has chosen. You don't boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. Okay? All right? Many people call and say that they love God, but they boot the door and climb up some other way. Why? Because, oh, that, that brokenness and uh, contrition and fear of the Lord, you know, scriptural repentance, that's just too hard. That's a work. Don't worry. Just believe and receive. Okay? For whom he did foreknow, he, he, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Again, uh, the Calvinist stuff, uh, Calvinist video that we did, uh, rebuking Calvinism will be for you in the description box. Okay? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What are we reading? On the 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And see, Satan and his angels, his ministers of righteousness, will want to divert your attention and have it fixated on the things of this world. Like Peter. You know, the Lord said, come to me, walk on the water. And Peter started walking, and then the wind was boisterous. Okay, boisterous wind. Okay. Sorry, we're writing this down so I don't forget. A boisterous wind. He got distracted by the wind, took his eyes off, and started to sink. He didn't plummet. Okay? All right, and of course... 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 4 on to verse 8. These distractions. How does God distract people? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Jesus lives within you. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, sealed until the day of redemption that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And see, Satan wants to twist that. Okay? We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Let's keep reading. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Okay? And see, Satan wants to distract you. And so many people get blinded by the little G-God of this world. Why? Because they get fixated on these things of this world. And they fret. They fret. In Philippians chapter 1, go to Philippians chapter 1. I know we haven't even gotten a fret yet, but wanted to address this because we'll work on, I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves. Let's just go to Philippians chapter 1. We want verses 20 on to verse 24. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body whether it be by life or death. For to me to live is Christ, 
and to die is gain. Remember, eternal mindset. But if I live in the flesh, this is, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I choose I fought not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. We can tend to get real selfish, can't we? Hey, let's be honest, brethren. Sisters, come on. We wanted to get out of here 10 minutes ago. We wanted to hear, come up hither 10 minutes ago. But like I've told you, I am one who believes that if God doesn't have a purpose for you, saint, then you wouldn't be here. I know some of the brethren, you know, like to kind of, well, what about this? And I'm, I'm all for that kind of discussion among saints. Okay? But like I said, I truly believe, unless, you know, unless you have fulfilled, you know, look at Paul, look at Peter. Okay? I have finished my course. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. Okay? Peter. Okay, I have been, it's been told me that I must soon put off this tabernacle. And what is he doing? Stirring their minds to remembrance. Okay? I truly believe that unless the Lord, unless you have fulfilled the purpose that the Lord has for you, um, you're, good, you're here. You're here. And those of you, dear brethren, it's like, why am I here? What am I doing? Okay, remember that story about the guy who was carrying two buckets of water on his shoulders going up the hill. He started at the bottom with water, with full water, and then by the time he got up to the hill, they were all empty. And he's like, you know, Lord, I'm, what am I doing? I'm wasting my time here. I start out at the bottom of the hill with buckets full of water. By the time I get up there, I mean, what am I doing? There's the, what's the point? And the Lord's like, hey. You know how those things were on your shoulders on either side? Look, look at your path that you were walking on on either side of you. Look on either side where the buckets were. And the guy noticed like, oh, there were holes in the bucket, obviously. But what he didn't notice was on the sides as he was carrying those buckets of water, all kinds of beautiful flowers and vegetation and all the bees were there and all kinds of beauty sprung up. While all the while he thought his time was being wasted because he started out at the bottom of the hill with buckets with no water, with water in them to the full, and then he gets up and there's no water in them. It's like, what am I doing? You don't know how the Lord is using you, saint. You don't know. Who knows what kind of stuff you have watered with your, with your mere presence somewhere. You don't know. You don't know. Okay? Being amongst other, I mean, just, you know, you go to the gas station or the grocery store to get a gallon of milk or whatever. Okay? Why, why am I here? What, what's the point? What's the point? You don't know how the Lord is using you. Okay? And like Paul said, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. We can get we can get selfish about it, can't we, brother? We can get selfish, and I got to tell you from experience: when you start fretting, when you start fretting, you fret about these things. What's the focus? You are the Lord. Hey, hey, hey! Look, see. Fret. Now we're getting to it. Fret. The uh, I forget the very. We're going to look at every variation of the word fret. Uh, it's fret, fretting, fretted, and fretteth. Uh, fret in the singular appears seven times. Uh, fretting, I think three. Uh, fretted and fretteth, I think appeared just once. Not that many times. We're going to look at every appearance of fret in the scriptures. Here's the interesting thing. Fret, fretting, fretted, and fretteth. They're all Old Testament 
words. I found that very interesting. I found that very, very interesting. I liken it a little onto backsliding. Like, how so, Brad? Backsliding is an Old Testament term. Backsliding was a term for uh, Israel specifically when they would fall and go away from the Lord. Backsliding in a dispensation where eternal security wasn't there. Backsliding today we liken onto people who get out of fellowship. The word backsliding does not appear in the New Testament. But we got Romans 7. We have 1st and 2nd Corinthians about saints who mess up. Okay? All right? Backsliding is an Old Testament term. Okay? In context of Israel falling from their father. Okay? From the Lord. Okay? Fret. Fretting. Fretted. Fretteth. Also appears only in the Old Testament. But as we have seen, the concept of um, stress and worry. Worry is not, does not appear in Scripture. Neither does stress. Interesting. Interesting. And in this dispensation, we are to have faith, right? We are to be eternally minded. Okay? Because our God will provide all our need. Okay? So, in that respect, I can, I can kind of understand why fret isn't, doesn't appear in the New Testament. Because we're not supposed to fret, even though we do. Okay? So, here's what's interesting. Fret. Turn to Leviticus chapter 13. Now, here's where some of the meat's going to get involved. Okay? Leviticus chapter 13, my personal favorite book within the Torah. The Torah, the first five books of Moses. Okay? Leviticus chapter 13, verses 50 on to verse 55. Okay? And the priest, now this is talking about, you know, uh, the plague of leprosy and what to do and how having a covering over their lips. Not over their nose. Boy, I wonder who is uh, making people do that uh, past couple of years. I wonder. Okay. And the priest shall look upon the plague and shut up it that hath the plague seven days. And he shall look on the plague on the seventh day. If the plague be spread key word to understanding this. If the plague be spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof, or in a skin, or in any work that is made of skin, the plague is a fretting leprosy. It is unclean. Now obviously this is talking about uh, leprosy in a garment. But notice this. Okay? Notice verse 51. And he shall look on the plague on the seventh day. If the plague be spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof, or in a skin. Hmm. Fleshly. Hmm. Or in, a, in any work that is made of skin. Hmm. The plague is a fretting, spreading leprosy. It is unclean. And Satan wants us to take our eyes off of the Lord, you know, the boisterous wind, and concentrate on the things of this world. We are not to be oblivious, but the world and worldly things and the cares of this life are not to be what motivates us. Serving the Lord. That's what motivates us. Ought to be. Okay? So we see this thing of spreading. The fruit of fretting. The fruits of fretting. 
Okay? He shall therefore burn that garment, whether warp or woof, in woolen or in linen, or anything of skin, wherein the plague is. For it is a fretting, spreading leprosy. It shall be burnt in the fire. So one of the aspects, one of the fruit of fretting, to fret, is what? It starts what? It starts to spread. What happens when we start to fret? Hmm? When we start to worry or stress? It doesn't stay in one spot. It spreads to many aspects of our daily walk. It affects our um, stressing about things. Can actually, and there is scientific uh, uh, evidence to prove this, stress can be detrimental to your health. Absolutely it can. That, that's, I mean, you look at Dr. Bird. Okay, you, the stuff he talked about. Uh, stressing about stuff like that, taking thought, as I should say, taking thought like that can do things to your health. Yes, it can. Okay? But see, when we start to fret, what happens? It doesn't stay located in one thing. It spreads. It will affect your sleep, your eating, your thought, your mannerisms. It spreads, doesn't it? Okay? Let's keep reading. And if, and if the priest shall look, and behold, the plague be not spread in the garment, there you see spread again, either in the warp or in the woof or in anything of skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is, and he shall shut it up seven days more. Okay? And the priest shall look on the plague after that it is washed, and behold, if the plague have not changed his color, and the plague be not spread, okay, fretting, spreading, it is unclean. Thou shalt burn it with fire. It is fret inward, whether it be bare within or without. Fret inward. And as we will see with the next appearance outside of the book of Leviticus, we will see another aspect of fret which is what? Grieved and grief. Okay? So first, let's, let's stay here where we're at. We see that fretting is to, is to spread. Fretting. Spread. Fret singular. It is a fret inward. It is a grief inward. We'll, we'll, we'll look at that with the next appearance. Okay? But now, while in Leviticus, Leviticus 14. Leviticus 14 39 on to verse 44. And the priest shall come again the seventh day, and shall look, and behold, if the plague be spread, that we see spread again, in the walls of the house. Plague of leprosy in a house, okay? Um, I've used this before in talking with people about um, uh, demonic... Excuse me! Excuse me! Devil activity in a house. Okay, but that's a different subject. Okay, and the priest shall come again the seventh day and shall look and behold if the plague be spread in the walls of the house. Then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which the plague is and they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city. And he shall cause the house to be scraped within round about and they shall pour out the dust that they scrape off without the city into an unclean place. Also, you can kind of liken this onto um, that lovely black mold. Yeah. And they shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones. And he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. And if the plague come again and break out in the house after that he hath taken away the stones and after he hath scraped the house and after it is plastered. Then the priest shall come and look, and behold, if the plague be spread, there it is again, in the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house. It is unclean. So right away, the fruits of fretting, of, to fret. Number one, fretting. It spreads. It spreads. When we fret about stuff, it doesn't just stay there. It can affect all of our everyday lives in many ways thought health eating sleeping 
communications. Okay? Okay? First Samuel. So, one of the fruits of fretting, to fret, is what? It spreads. Doesn't stress and worrying, as it were? Hmm. Doesn't it spread? And aren't the devils there just to light the fire to keep it going? That's what they do best. Yeah. First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 8. Now there was a certain man of Ramathiam Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah the son of Jehoram, the son of Eliu, the son of Tau, the son of Zuf, an Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the, of the other was Panina. And Panina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. In Shiloh, excuse me. And the two sons of Eli, Hophini and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was, and when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also Provoke, pay attention, provoked her sore, sore, grieved her, okay? For to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. Let's keep reading for context. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore, for she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? Now you see provoke twice. What is provoke? To poke you, to get you going, to get you goat. What the devils do? Satan will provoke you to look away from the Lord by the boisterous winds that come, right? But making her fret, grief, to grieve, to grieve them, as with the plague of leprosy. It is a fret inward, okay? It wasn't a provocation, it was a grief. It's a plague, it's a grief, okay? All right, so you see here, the adversary will provoke you to take your eyes off of the Lord and to get more fixated on the things, your circumstances, right? So, one of the other fruits of fretting to fret is what? It spreads, and it's a grief, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? Isn't it? Okay? Psalm 37. Okay? Psalm 37. Psalm 37. All the appearances of fret and all their variables are going to be found right here in the Psalms, at least, in their appearance in the Psalms. In Psalm uh, 37, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now, fret, fretting, fret it, fret it. To fret, what are the fruits of fretting? Number one, it spreads. Number two, it's a grief. It grieves. Number three, Psalm 37, verses 1 on verse 9. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Our dear brother Alexander Hartley did an incredible video on comparing envy and jealousy. They're not the same thing, okay? They are two different things, all right? Uh, Lord willing, I will find that, or he will, and I will put it in the description box, or he will put it in the comments section, okay? 
Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut, cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Beg your pardon, I had a massive sneeze come on, okay? Look at verse 3 there. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. But my God shall provide all your need in his riches in Christ Jesus. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay? Okay? Verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And the desires of your heart that are according to his will. You read about that in 1 John chapter 5. Okay? Because these Christians and a lot of these devils will say, Well, whatever your heart wants, make sure you just go to God and he'll give you... No. Okay? He will provide your need, not your greed. You go to the Lord because you just want a Rolls Royce or something like that. No, 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 no. It's according to his desire. If your desires match his desires, you're on good standing. When it's just to glorify you, no. Okay? Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Okay? Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Oh boy. And verse 9. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now, what do we see here about fret? Number 1. Verse 1. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Envy. It can cause envy. Hold your place here and look at Psalm 49. Look at Psalm 49. Okay? Ah, uh, let me see. Uh, Psalm 49. Ah, uh, let me see. One second, please. Okay, sorry about that. Wrong place. Psalm 73. Look at Psalm 73. Verses 16... On to, oh, 19. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me, till I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou castest them down to destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. Look at verse 22. So foolish was I, Oh, no, verses, uh, let's read to verse 22. Uh, verse 22. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Interesting. So when you look at fret here, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Okay? When you fret, it can spread. Okay? It will cause grief, but it can also cause in you envy. It's like, here I am doing like I'm supposed to do. Here I am, I'm doing what you say. I'm following your the, the scriptures for us today. I'm not doing, you know, I'm not doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Why are, they going, why are they succeeding? And why, Lord, am I failing? Right? Right? Okay? It can cause envy. And also in that envy, envy what? Okay? 
Look at the other one. Uh, let's see, where was the other? Verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to path. To pass, excuse me. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Okay? So, again, fret, to fret. It can spread. It's a grief. But it can also cause in one envy. And also in that envy, it can cause anger and wrath. Well, I'm doing as I'm supposed to. I'm, I'm following the law. I'm, you know, the laws of the land and that kind of stuff. And I'm doing like I'm supposed to. Praying, doing all this. How come, how come this devil who's lying to people, how come he's getting going, doing things well? Look at him. Huh? Why is that? See? See? To fret. It spreads. It's a grief. It can cause envy. It can also cause anger and wrath. And what does our Lord say of that? Cease from anger and forsake wrath, which is a fruit of what? Envy. Okay? Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And there, evil. Evil. And also now, Ecclesiastes 7, just one verse, Ecclesiastes 7, one verse, verse 9, Ecclesiastes 7, 9, okay? Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. When you're fretting, it spreads, okay? It can cause you great grief. It can make you envious. You read Psalm 73, okay? Talks about it pretty good, okay? But in that envy, it can make you angry and wrathful, which the Lord equates to being evil. And right here, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth, resteth in the bosom of fools. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Okay? Okay? Alright? And also, while we're on this, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 22. Verse 22. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, the Bibles take out without a cause. So when the Lord Jesus got angry, he made him a sinner. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Reka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Think about this verse. When Jesus Christ comes back at his second coming with us who go up at the redemption of the purchased possession, he comes back as king, sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. There ain't going to be no doubt anymore that Jesus Christ is God the Father. There ain't going to be no doubt that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings. There ain't going to be no doubt that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? There, it's No. He's going to be sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. You know, the one that all you atheists deny and you Christians aren't going after the true one. Okay, yeah. That Jesus Christ that you reject, he's going to be on the throne at Jerusalem. You're going to be able to look at him. Let's see. There's no faith involved salvifically during the kingdom of heaven. It's all works. Faith you have is in God, who you will be able to see during the kingdom of heaven. So, so, when you look at that verse, thou fool, a fool says in his heart, there is no God. 
Think about that. Think about that, because these devils, when you call them fools, they say they come to this, oh, you're calling me a fool. Context. This is for the kingdom of heaven. When God himself, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, will physically, literally be on earth at Jerusalem. You're going to be able to see him, as they did in the Garden of Eden. Okay? You're going to, he's, he's, that's Jesus Christ on the throne, right there. You're going to be able to see him. Okay? So, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Uh, 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 you, you, see the, you see the guy on the throne, right? Okay? So, during the kingdom of heaven, you call someone a fool, and the fool says in his heart, there is no God. <laughs> Look! <laughs> I mean, even vile, wicked devils during the kingdom of heaven, because remember, sin is still going to be around during the kingdom of heaven. For them to say that there is no God, how can they do that? They might be, well, he's not my God. Okay? I'm sure there will be those during the kingdom of heaven, foolishly, of course, foolishly behaving as if they say in their heart there is no God, but yet God's going to be on the throne. Okay? So, during the kingdom of heaven, you call someone a fool, a fool says in his heart there is no God, but yet there he is on the throne. You see how that works? Okay? You see how that works? You understand? Okay? Today, it is by grace through faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. During the kingdom of heaven, you're going to see him on the throne, people. So when you get these devils, when they come to this to defend themselves, and it's like, ah, oh, you call them a fool, you're in danger of hellfire. In context, this is said in context, number one, Doctrinally, it's for the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Also, it's in context for the king who will physically be on the earth who you'll be able to see. Okay. Instruction and in righteousness. Okay. Doctrine. Blip. No. Okay. Comprende? Keep that in mind the next time you run into one of these devils who you say they come to this to defend themselves. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Okay. Ephesians chapter 4. <laughs> and unfortunately, Ephesians chapter 4. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 on to verse 27. <laughs> Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, Neither give place to the devil. Unfortunately, both myself and my wife have failed at this. We've gone to bed angry. Anger resteth in the bosom of fools. And see, when anger rests and you sin in your anger, you're, get, you're doing what? Giving place to the devil. Envy. Envy. Anger. Wrath. Evil. Okay? It's okay to be angry with the cause. There is such a thing as righteous indignation. Okay? We are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Okay? All right? But see, when we just won't let things go, okay, and we get distracted by the boisterous wind that Satan will have us focus on, okay? You see? So, to fret, it spreads. It causes grief. It can cause envy, which in turn can cause anger and wrath. Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Brother, welcome to the world of my cri uh, chicken scratch. I'll try, but I can't promise. <laughs> you know who you are. I love you, brother. Proverbs 9, verses 1 on to verse 3. Wisdom hath builded her house, the fear of the Lord. Wisdom, again, comparable unto a beautiful woman. She hath hewn out her seven pillars, 
She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She also hath furbished her table. Uh, what are we? Yeah, Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. Excuse me. I was reading 9. Were you following along and like, Brad, Brad. Let's finish the verse 3 at least. Huh, while we were there? Huh? Yes. Wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furbished her table. She hath sent forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Let's read. Uh, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Verse uh, Proverbs 19. Sorry for that. See, that's why you got to read along. Because sometimes the mouth will go quicker than the brain. And I just read 9 instead of 19. And if you were following along, you're like, uh, Brad, Brad. So, excuse me. So, uh, Proverbs 19. <laughs> yeah. And there are those out there who accuse me of thinking that I'm this, uh, you know, sinless, perfect, without fault or mistake-free uh, uh, individual. <laughs> yeah. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way and his heart fretteth against the Lord. So in this context, fretteth against the Lord. Look at, the, look at those verses. Okay? We see fool and the soul without knowledge. It is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Hasteth. Okay? And remember our Lord talks about, um, you know, if your eye offend thee, pluck it out. If your hand offend thee, cut it off. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. You know, about not putting wicked things before your eyes. Not touching things that you shouldn't touch. Not going to places that you shouldn't go to. Okay? That kind of thing. So, in this context, fretteth against the Lord. How many times do we see this is a reference unto being foolish, isn't it? Because Psalm 14, 1 through 3, Psalm 14, 1 through 3, Psalm 14, 1 through 3. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looketh down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And that is echoed, of course, in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18 specifically, which the easy believism devil, heretic scoundrels, conveniently like to skip over. And of course, Psalm 53 Again, Psalm 53, verses 1 on to verse 3. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Let's read verse 4. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Oh, they have a knowledge, they have a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Mm -hmm. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God. Hmm. There were they in great fear where no fear was. We're not to fear man. We're not to fear the things of this world. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord will be safe. And see, it's the fear of man that John addresses in 1 John, not the fear of the Lord. Okay? 
And God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. There were they in great fear, where no fear was. For God hath scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame, because God hath despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when God bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. So, this thing of fretteth, fretting. What do we see here in, Psalm, in Proverbs 19? Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool who says in his heart there is no God. Also that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. When I was that in John, uh, when thou seest a, uh, seeth a, a um, thief, thou consentest and be partakers with the uh, adulterers. You know, you boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. So, in this context, fretteth can what? Is also likened unto foolishness that what? Is perverse and perverteth. So, fretting, to fret, okay? It spreads. It causes grief. It can cause envy, which causes anger and wrath, which our Lord calls evil. It's likened unto foolishness, and it is perverse and perverteth. Because think about it. When you're fretting about things that you can't control, your mind starts erasing. It spreads all over. It grieves you. You can get envious about others doing better who are doing wickedly and you're not. And you can start to think foolishly. Behave foolishly. And that will pervert your way. And is perverse. Proverbs 24 verses 17 on to verse 20. And this is just a reiteration of envy. Okay? Proverbs 24, verses 17 on to 20. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. Let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. They're envious, tied in again with fret. Obvious, okay? For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. And like I said, Psalm 73. Psalm 73. You know, I was envious at the foolish. Because there are no bands in their death. They're not plagued like other men. We got the time. We got the time. Okay, and again, this envy, uh, obvious, the tie in there as we see the verse. Okay, fret not, uh, verse 19. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. Uh, the same thing as was uh, Psalm 37. Again, reiterating envy as one of the fruits of fretting. Okay? All right? But Psalm 73. Let's, let's go to Psalm 73. Okay? Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Okay? <laughs> Truly God is good to Israel. Israel. Even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Or well, you could say that uh, Asaph, he was fretting. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt. And speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily, high up, you know. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. 
King Nebuchadnezzar, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the glory of my kingdom and the glory of my majesty? Uh, Daniel chapter 4. Okay. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, and the waters of a full cup are run out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain. I washed my hands in innocency. When you start to fret and you see these kinds of things, exactly this can happen. To a saint even, we can behave foolishly. We can behave as if we say in our heart there is no God. Saints don't say in our hearts that there is no God. That's impossible because the Lord is within us. Okay? Okay? But let's continue. But we sure can't behave as if we say in our hearts there is no God. Can't we? Can't we? Okay? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the children, generation of thy children. But I thought to know this. It was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I therein. What is the sanctuary? God lives within us. So that sanctuary that is for us saints is prayer spending time with him in the scriptures having fellowship with one another okay but that sanctuary that you the saint have today is that time of prayer with the Lord because he dwells within you okay this sanctuary he's talking about the actual physical temple thing God does not dwell in temples made with hands Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Let's continue. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awaketh. So, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt destroy, despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved. I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant, I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me up by thy right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire Amen, amen. Why wasn't this a part of my notes? <laughs> my flesh and my heart faileth, which Satan will have you to put your attention on the things that are needful for the flesh. God knows what you need, but first seek him. The real Jesus, who is God the Father. Not the ones that the Christians tell you about. Okay? My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart, and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a-whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. 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 So, here's a good warning about fretting, to fret. Okay, now, Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Verses 16 on to verse 22. Now, we as saints, we do not say in our hearts there is no God. We, we can't. We can't. That's impossible for us saints. We can behave foolishly. We can deny God. Yes, we can. We're going to address that. But we don't say in our hearts that there is no God. We can't. 
because God dwells within us. Okay? We can't. But those of you who allow yourself to fret, to stress, to worry, as it were, about the things of this world and not going to the true Lord. Isaiah 8, verses 16 on to verse 22. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. We are, we are in the ministry of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation. Okay? And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Okay? Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel, from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And what are we reading to? Verse 22. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not the people, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Wizards and familiar spirits. You know, Satan, he will have, again, the distraction looking elsewhere than rather than the Lord. There is a video on familiar spirits uh, on the channel here. I'm writing that down, which will be in the description box, okay? Look at verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, Okay? Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Study that you thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Follow along in the scriptures. Okay? Read with me. Okay? I want you to read the scriptures. I want you to follow along. Okay? When you come to something where you gotta pause the video and read the content, I want you to do that. I want you to be in the book. But no, Christians, they don't, they're buildings, they don't even take their Bibles with them. They give them little pieces of paper with all the stuff on them. They don't encourage them to seek the Lord themselves through the Scriptures. To law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Not the light that is behind the eyes having life, but light. And who is that light? That's not a capital L light there, but the Lord Jesus Christ. But also keep in mind that Satan himself uh, is transformed into an angel of light. And no marvel that his ministers are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Yeah. And they shall pass through it hardly be set and hungry. Why? Because they they don't hold to the law and the testimony, and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves, and curse their king and their god, and look upward. Ah, ah. And they shall look onto the earth. Get that. Okay. Get that. And behold, trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish and they shall be driven to darkness fret themselves what will they do grieve themselves they'll be envious and it will all spread within them and what that will cause anger and wrath which is foolishness and perverted to them but with those who are not saved who fret stress and worry you lost people, you blame God. It can cause you to blame God. Because see? Because why? Look at verse 20. Okay? Well, 19. Okay, where we started. Verses 16 on to verse 18. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Instruction and in righteousness. This was under the law. Under the dispensation where eternal security wasn't there. Okay, the death, burial, and resurrection, the bloodshed on the cross had not yet happened. Instruction and in righteousness, okay? We, the saints, the church of the living God, we hold to the authorized version of the scriptures. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, okay? 
We listen to people. We check you out, boy. And if there's something wrong, we talk. Hey, hey, dude, let, let's talk, okay? All right? Verse 17. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Like we already looked at Job, okay? Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. It's like, Lord, okay, you, 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 you're letting us go through some pretty scary stuff. Well, it's like, you keep your eye on me. But Lord, what about, never mind that. You keep your eye on me. And saints, sealed until the day of redemption. See, and this is another thing. Saved people fall. Saved people fall. Lost people fall away because they were never of us. Okay? Watch out for heretics who try to say that saved people can fall away. Saved people cannot fall away. Saved people fall. But we do not fall away. Hence, it is impossible for a saint to say in his heart, there is no God. We can behave as if we say in our heart, there is no God. Acting foolish, yes. But saints aren't fools. Saints were saved, sealed, born again. The Lord dwells within. How can you say in your heart, there is no God, and be saved? You can't. We can behave foolishly. Yes, we can. But we can't say in our hearts, there is no God. We can't. That is something a saint cannot do. And if you're going to argue that a saint can say in his heart that there is no God, let's say it, let's be blunt, then you probably aren't saved, are you? Uh, you're, you're serving the Trinity, right? Yeah, that isn't God. Okay, let's continue. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Zion. And the Jews require a sign. What's the sign on to the Jews today when they see Gentile saints witnessing unto them of their God? That's their sign for them today. Contrast all this. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead, dead in trespasses and sins. He is the living God. Remember in Deuteronomy, where Moses talks about if the, your friend, your relative, or whatever, say, hey, let's go worship other gods. You won't do it. Okay? Under the law, they were to be stoned. Okay? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay? There are a lot of devils out there who do, for some part, speak according to the law and the testimony. But there's only so far that they can go. They can, they can do a good skimming. They don't get deep. And they shall pass through it, hardly be set and hungry. A famine in the land. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. Lowercase k. Okay? These Christians who have been deceived by these other Christians and when everything goes to Hades for them, not serving the true God in the first place, they fret and it spreads. It grieves them. It makes them to become envious giving them anger and wrath. And they are foolish. They behave foolishly. And it perverts their way. And ultimately, it can cause them to curse God. Now we saints, though he slay us, yet we will trust in him. But there are times when we as saints, like, wow, Lord. <laughs> you know, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, 
It sure makes you examine yourself. It sure makes you look over everything with a fine comb or with a fine tooth uh, comb or whatever or with a magnifying glass. Doesn't it, brother? Sister? It's like, okay, okay. What am I doing? What is there something? Let me, Lord, what am I doing? Back at the error to think, okay, this is a consequent proportionate not proportionate to my sin because if the Lord punished us according to our iniquities they wouldn't be one of us left we'd all be in hell okay but you're just like okay what am, uh, am I doing something what am I doing am I doing something wrong okay until you give me a clear as day check Lord I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going on but I'm gonna be a little bit more you know examining myself you know which we are supposed to do daily I'll tell you what, brother, sister, when you're going through hardship, everything is magnified, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? And Psalm 145, Psalm 145, Psalm 145, Verses 13 on to verse 21. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall. Saved people fall. Lost, uh, lost infiltrators, false converts, they fall away. And riseth, raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Unless you believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Is Jesus Christ God the Father? He is not the Father. How dare you? How dare you? You ain't serving the true Lord. If Jesus Christ, if Jesus Christ ain't the Father, then you ain't serving the true God. Period. Okay? He will fulfill the desire of them to fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. But all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. And Ezekiel 18, Ezekiel 18, <laughs> some might say, well, oh, yeah, you know, Lord's so unfair, isn't he? Yeah, Ezekiel 18, verse 25, Ezekiel 18, 25, yeah. <laughs> Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal, and are not your ways unequal? 29 on verse 32. Yet said the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal, are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, Everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. I said it that way purposely, brother. Okay? Now, dispensational difference. You and I, to say, be saved today, we can't turn from our sins. We can't do that. That's not even what the Lord requires. What you are to turn from is your self-righteousness that you think you are a good person. That you're not as bad as so-and-so. That's what you're repenting of. Okay? You couldn't repent of your sins today even if a shotgun was held at the back of your favorite head. Okay? The turning, the repenting that you are doing is of your self-righteousness. That's hard for a lot of people. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed. Dispensational dis difference. 
eternal security was not here during this dispensation, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? And you did that by keeping the law. Different dispensation, instruction and in righteousness. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. A lot of people like to go to Ezekiel 18, say, well, God doesn't, no, God, he, re, he, re, he delighteth in mercy. Yes, he would ma rather be merciful and gracious. Yes, our Father would. But there are those who have made their choice to serve the devil and are going to hell and guiding people to hell. Okay? Yes, our Lord delighteth in mercy. He would rather be gracious. But if you reject him, his wrath is for you, not his love. God doesn't, present tense, love the Christ-rejecting sinner. Okay? No matter what the Christians out there and on YouTube want you to believe. Okay? All right? 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 on verse 13. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even on the bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, those who went the way of the cross. That's what that's talking about, not the Calvinism nonsense, okay? <clears throat> that they may also obtain salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, dead to ourselves and unto the world, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. And you look across the page in uh, chapter 3, verse 12, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution, verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Okay? Go back to verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now, this is not talking about eternal security. We fret against the Lord. We fret. We deny him. Not keeping our eyes focused on him deny him by walking contrary to the word deny him by allowing the boisterous wind to distract us deny him in doing uh, ill will with his provision denying him and it's like hey I wanted you to do that but you didn't do it okay he will deny us he also will deny us not eternal security let's read verse 13 if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. See, verse 13 ought to be enough to tell you that the denying of us is not our uh, salvation. Okay? Because in this dispensation, you come to the Lord on his terms, you're once saved, always saved, eternally secure. Okay? That's just the way it is. All right? But as talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, okay? You walk contrary to the scriptures. You walk contrary to what he wants you to do. You deny him in those fashions. Oh, he can deny you. Oh, he can deny you peace. He can uh, deny you tranquility, okay? He can deny you contentment, okay? Okay? Being content with what you have? What's the opposite to that? Envious? Hmm? Being at peace, what is the opposite of peace? Grief. Hmm? Also, um, anger and wrath. Being at peace. Okay? And spreading. Fretting spreads. To fret spreads. And we are to spread the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ by word and by deed, okay? There's so much more that the Lord can deny us. But our salvation, our salvation is not one of them, okay? 
it's no surprise to me that so many of these Christians uh, like to deny eternal security because when you're denying se eternal security, what's the basis for their security? What they do. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Okay? Ephesians 4, 29 unto 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, that entails profanity, but more so speaking doctrine contrary to the salvific doctrine for today. Example, trying to tell you that the Sermon on the Mount doctrine is doctrine for today. That is not uh, corrupt communication, but it's written for somebody else. It's written for us during the kingdom of heaven. It's not applicable doctrinally today. So when you got someone trying to apply that today, okay, their communication is corrupt because doctrinally that's not for us today. You understand? Okay? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, so you can grieve this Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Day of redemption. Catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away with you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Okay? Okay? Ephesians 5, 29 on to verse 30. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth, nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. What does that mean? He cannot deny himself. Okay? See, we are part of the Lord. We are not little g-gods. We are not little Christs, but, okay, if we believe not, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. The Lord lives within you, you are not your own. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Someone who wants to deny eternal security wants to glorify themselves, period. That's it. Someone who denies eternal security today in this dispensation, they want to glorify themselves and justify themselves. That's it. That's all there is to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, and the Lord is that Spirit? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Any man includes yourself also. Okay? Alright? Ch uh, chapter 6, verses 19 on to verse 20. Okay? Chapter 6, 19 on to verse 20. In 1 Corinthians, of course. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, the, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, who kept the law perfectly, hence that sinful flesh was sanctified because he never sinned even though the flesh itself was sinful. Got it? Okay. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And chapter 7, verse 23, one verse. You're bought with the price. Be not ye the servants of men. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. 
verses 20 on to verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 20 on to verse 22. See what happens when we get out of fellowship with the Lord. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thine hand unto, for to do until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Of course, this is for another dispensation where eternal security wasn't there. But remember, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. You mess around on the Lord and get away from him to a point to where he has to kill you? The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Verses 45 on to verse 48 here. Okay? Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Why? Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Totally different dispensation. The instruction and in righteousness is, number one, this he did to the apple of his eye. The Jew, the Hebraic people. And you think you and I are going to escape? Huh? Our salvation today in this dispensation is secure. Once saved, always saved. We just looked at it! Okay? Under the law, eternal security wasn't there. Once saved, always saved was not under the law that is for today in this dispensation okay you have to rightly divide the word of truth we looked at this for our instruction and in righteousness see you as a saint God will chastise you but if you are obstinate and behave foolishly as if you say in your heart there is no God and fret against the Lord He'll hand you over to Satan. You'll, you'll go to heaven, saint. But your life will be a mess. You'll be of no use to the Lord. Your testimony will be shot. There are so many things you can lose. Salvation is not the thing that you can lose. Why? Because it's not yours. It's the Lord's. He dwells within you. It's not your salvation. It is the gift of God. Comprende? Okay? 58 on to 61. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave to thee. Also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Okay? And this thing about grief, okay? This thing about grief, again, fretting is a grief, all right? We looked at that to show you that saved people fall. Saved people do not fall away. And when we as saints allow ourselves to fret, it's very dangerous for us. But praise the Lord for he is merciful. And he cannot and he will not deny himself. 
okay? We deny him. He will deny us and many other things, but salvation, no. Lastly, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 16. The last appearance of fret in all its variations. Ezekiel 16. We're almost done. Ezekiel 16, verses 37 on to verse 43. We're almost done. Behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure, and all them that, th that thou hast loved, with all them that thou hast hated. I will even gather them round about against thee, and will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. See, you're not saved, and you're fretting, letting worry get the best of you, stressing. You're not saved? Wow. These are the things that will behold you not being saved, utter destruction. And your destruction that comes to you will put you into hell. And I will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged. And I will give thee blood in fury and jealousy. And I will also give thee into their hand and they shall throw down thine eminent place and shall break down thy high places. They shall strip thee also of thy clothes and shall take thy fair jewels and leave thee naked and bare. What are we reading to? Verse 43. They shall also bring up a company against thee and they shall stone thee with stones and thrust thee through with their swords. And they shall burn thine houses with fire and execute judgments upon thee in the sight of many women. And I will cause thee to cease from playing the harlot. Thou also shalt give no hire any more. So I will make my fury toward thee to rest, and my jealousy shall depart from thee, and I will be quiet, and will be no more angry. Because thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, but hast fretted against me in all these things. Behold, therefore, I also will recompense with an ass, a verb, thy way upon thine head, saith the Lord God. And thou shalt not commit this lewdness above all thine abominations. Fretted me in all thy things. Grieved. Again, link on to grief. Grieve. Woe unto us when we grieve the Lord. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Brother, sister, saved, born again. You get drunk, the Lord is in you. You're not getting the Lord drunk, but the Lord dwells within your body that you have put intoxicants into. Hey, saint, you're struggling with pornography? Huh? Your little fingers do the walk into the porn site? Your eyes are seeing that filth? The Lord is in you seeing what you see. You're going someplace to a church building, which is a house of devils, not sanctified, not authorized in the scriptures for us today, but is actually spoken against. Hmm? You're taking the Lord with you. The Lord is going with you when you go to someplace you shouldn't go. And as a saint, when we fret, when we fret, okay, again, let's look at the fruits of fret. Number one, it spreads. Number two, it, can ca it causes grief. Not only to you, but also we have evidence that we fretting also can grieve the Lord, okay? It can cause envy. It can cause anger and wrath, which our Lord calls evil, okay? It, it can lead to foolishness, which is what? Perverse and perverteth. Okay? Fretting is not good. And see, again, like I said at the beginning of this video, fret, fret, fretting, fretted, and fretteth appear only in the Old Testament, not in the New. Why? Because we walk by faith, not by sight. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 
But yet, we still do fret, don't we? And of course, the Lord was grieved several times. You know, you read in Genesis chapter 6, he was grieved that he made man. He's like, ah. You know, even though he knew what was going to happen, it still grieved him. He was grieved that he made Saul king, even though he knew what Saul was going to do. Okay? Have you been convinced that fretting, worry, stress, we're not to be oblivious. We're not to be flippant. No. But, Romans chapter 8, 32 under the close of the chapter, and then we'll be done. See how we did that? Romans 8, verses 32 under verse 39. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? According to his desire, he will not deny himself. He cannot deny himself. We deny him, he will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. See, that seal, eternally secure, that seal until the day of redemption, okay? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Elect there, again, you wicked Calvinist, is not elect and non-elect as taught by your Messiah, Calvin. No. Elect. The elected way of the cross. Okay? Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Save people. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Wow, Lord, do you really love me? You're letting me go through all this stuff. Think about that. When you say something like that, um, when that happens, read you Isaiah 53. Yeah. Yeah. When you start thinking, oh, Lord, you don't love me because you're letting me go through these things. Read Isaiah chapter 53. And then you get on the floor and you snot yourself in tears and repentance like, Lord, I'm so sorry I ever even thought that. See? The thought of foolishness is sin. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Death, burial, and resurrection. Shed blood on the cross. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature. And Satan, remember, is a created being. Remember that. Shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There are so many of you, our brethren, our sisters, we love dearly. We pray for you every day. Every day. Who are going through incredible sufferings. Who are going through such hardships. If we could help you, we would. But we are here to encourage you. Strengthen you. Fretting profiteth a man nothing. We aren't oblivious, but we don't fret. Outside stress will come, but who will separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. That crushing weight that the world puts on you, 
It may crush your body, but it won't crush you because we are eternally secure. And to be with Christ is far better, but as long as you're here, the Lord has something for you to do. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. hope this has helped you. I hope this has been something for you, saints. You lost people. Oh, you lost people. Who Satan tosses around like a rag doll. You're nothing to him. You belong to him anyway. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Please. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. Thank you to all of you who have prayed for us, who prayed for us, who are praying for us. And thank you to all of you who have helped us in prayer and in whatever ways you have. Thank you. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.